The tragic death of Hollywood icon Marilyn Monroe has remained shrouded in mystery and controversy for decades. On August 5, 1962, Monroe's lifeless body was discovered in her Los Angeles home, the victim of an apparent suicide by barbiturate overdose. However, the hazy circumstances surrounding her demise leave many unanswered questions. Was she the victim of a calculated murder plot? Did she unintentionally overdose? Or had the troubled starlet reached her breaking point and taken her own life? In this video, we will examine the various theories regarding Marilyn's death that have captivated the public for years. We'll look at the official police reports, the allegations of mafia and government involvement, and Marilyn's own well-documented struggles. The twists and turns in this case reveal just how complex Marilyn Monroe's life and death really were. So join us as we investigate one of the most enduring mysteries of Hollywood's golden age. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment to let us know your thoughts on what really happened to the iconic Marilyn. The death of iconic actress and model Marilyn Monroe on August 5, 1962 shocked the world. Monroe was found dead in her home in Los Angeles, California at the age of 36 from an overdose of barbiturates. Her death was officially ruled a probable suicide. However, the circumstances surrounding her death have led to much debate and conspiracy theories over the decades, some believing it was suicide, some believing it was an accidental overdose, and some convinced it was murder. At the time of her death, Monroe was a huge star and a sex symbol. But she was also struggling with personal issues, including mental illness, substance abuse, and relationship problems. The investigation into her death was quick and full of inconsistencies, leaving many unanswered questions. As a result, numerous theories about what really happened to Marilyn Monroe have emerged. The official story, probable suicide. The Los Angeles Police Department's investigation concluded that Marilyn Monroe's death was most likely a suicide. The coroner's report stated the cause of death as acute barbiturate poisoning and listed it as a probable suicide. According to the official record, Monroe's psychiatrist Dr. Ralph Greenson called police on the morning of August 5, 1962 to report Monroe was found dead by her housekeeper in her bedroom. She was lying face down on her bed, with one hand holding the telephone. An empty bottle of sedatives was found by the bed, and there was no sign of foul play. The timeline stated that Monroe had last been seen alive around 8 p.m. the previous night. No one heard or saw anything suspicious throughout the night. The timeline seemed to point to Monroe taking her own life sometime in the early morning hours. The Suicide Theory Those who believe Monroe died by suicide point to her long history of substance abuse, depression, and volatile relationships. In the months leading up to her death, Monroe suffered several personal setbacks. She was devastated over her divorce from playwright Arthur Miller the previous year. Her last few movies had been box office disappointments, causing her to worry about her career. She had recently been fired from the movie Something's Got to Give due to frequent absences and substance abuse issues. She underwent a stint in a psychiatric hospital for depression in 1961. Monroe had attempted suicide four times previously, including overdosing on pills. With her mood swings, depression, and addiction issues, suicide seemed a probable scenario. The presence of empty pill bottles and no sign of foul play supported this. Additionally, Monroe had seen several doctors over the years to obtain copious prescriptions. 
it's possible she stockpiled pills for a future suicide attempt. The coroner stated the level of barbiturates in her system was many times over the lethal limit. However, inconsistencies in the evidence have led some to doubt this official suicide ruling. The Accidental Overdose Theory Some believe Marilyn Monroe's known issues with drugs and alcohol caused an accidental overdose. Supporters of this theory don't believe she intentionally killed herself, but popped too many pills and lost track of how much she had taken. It was known that Monroe saw multiple doctors to obtain prescriptions. Records show she had hundreds of pills in her possession at the time of her death, which could have easily led to confusion and accidental overdose. Dr. Greenson had reported seeing Monroe, somewhat drugged, the night before, so she may have already taken some pills before taking more in the morning. There are some issues with the accidental overdose theory, however. The level of barbiturates in Monroe's system was extremely high, making it questionable she could have ingested such a large amount unintentionally. Additionally, empty bottles near the scene point to intentional overdose. The Murder Theories Many have contended that Marilyn Monroe was murdered and that her death was staged to look like a suicide. Numerous murder theories have emerged over the decades, often centering around her ties to the Kennedy brothers. The Mob Murder Theory One popular theory is that Monroe was killed by the Mafia over her affair with John F. Kennedy. Some believe mobster Sam Giancana ordered her murder, with help from other mob associates like Peter Lawford. The theory goes that Monroe and JFK had an affair that ended in early 1962. Giancana and others allegedly worried Monroe would talk publicly and reveal secrets, threatening both JFK's career and the mob's interests. They are thought to have ordered her death to prevent this. Her house was supposedly bugged, allowing them to listen in and plan when to kill her. While Monroe's relations with JFK and his brother Robert Kennedy are well documented, no concrete evidence directly ties the Mafia to her death. The FBI monitored Monroe and mobsters like Giancana extensively but found no evidence of foul play. Still, some point to circumstantial evidence like Monroe's diary allegedly referencing an affair with RFK soon before her death as possible motivation. The Government Cover-Up Theory Similar speculation around Monroe's JFK affair prompted some to believe the CIA or FBI played a role. Some posit that her death was made to look like suicide to prevent a scandal. Government agencies may have wanted to avoid revelations about the affair that could have compromised the Kennedy administration. Suspicions around government involvement were heightened by inconsistencies in the death investigation. But again, no hard evidence has ever substantiated this. Most experts doubt federal authorities would go so far as to murder Monroe simply to protect a politician's reputation. The Robert Kennedy Theory A more recent theory points the finger at Robert F. Kennedy as responsible for Monroe's death. The premise is that RFK wanted to silence Monroe over her affair with him and his brother in order to avoid scandal during JFK's presidency. Proponents claim Monroe's house was bugged and her relationships closely monitored by Kennedy insiders. Biographer Darwin Porter has pushed the idea that Bobby Kennedy orchestrated Monroe's murder with help from Peter Lawford. Critics dismiss this as wild speculation without convincing evidence. Many historians reject the theory that the beloved Kennedy brothers could have been involved in Monroe's death. Additionally, records indicate RFK was on the East Coast on the day of Monroe's death, making direct involvement unlikely. The Cover-Up Those who believe in a murder conspiracy point to suspicious circumstances and anomalies around the investigation as the main proof. Some examples often cited include her body was found before reporters arrived, yet photographers were already present snapping photos of her corpse. Police reports claim no pills or pill bottles were initially found at the scene, yet bottles appeared in crime scene photos. Some think evidence was tampered with. No glass of water was found for Monroe to swallow the many pills that killed her. 
Only an external examination of the body was done at the morgue and no autopsy was performed. Toxicology samples were destroyed. Records of calls placed from Monroe's home around the time of her death mysteriously disappeared. Associates like Peter Lawford called Monroe's agent in an apparent effort to hide information and control the narrative after her death. Police and coroner's statements had major inconsistencies. While suspicious, none of this proves definite wrongdoing. But it has fueled lasting intrigue around whether the full truth has yet to be uncovered. Lasting Mysteries in the end, no single theory provides definitive answers on how and why Marilyn Monroe died. The limited, contradictory evidence allows room for reasonable doubt regarding suicide. But the lack of conclusive evidence of murder makes those theories speculative. The truth likely lies somewhere in the middle. Monroe's fragile state of mind, relationships problems, and history of substance abuse suggest suicide cannot be ruled out. But the inconsistent investigation and government connections point to the possibility of something more sinister. Unless new evidence emerges, the death of Marilyn Monroe seems destined to remain one of Hollywood's enduring mysteries. Monroe's tragic death at the pinnacle of fame frozen her legacy and ensured her immortal mystique. The uncertainty around both her amazing life and untimely end continue to captivate the public.